Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. This is a problem on the topic of complex numbers basics. Let z be a complex number such that absolute value of z minus 25 all over z minus 1 is equal to 5. What is the exact value of absolute value of z? That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do the calculations correctly, the answer that you will get is exactly 5. Uh, okay, now let us solve the problem. Okay, one uh, very natural way of solving problems like this is to say that let z be a complex number like a plus bi in a standard form. So I'm assuming that a and b are real, and because z is a complex number, it can be written in this form for some unknown a and b yet. Okay, so then I use this equation uh, to find what is wanted. So I plug this into this equation. Okay, so what happens here? it becomes absolute value. I have z minus 25, so this is my c. If I subtract 25 from it, because 25 is a real number, it will affect the real part, yes, but it will not affect the imaginary part. So this is z minus 25 if z is this. Similarly, z minus 1 will do the same thing because a is real, 1 is real, so if I subtract, it becomes a minus 1 plus and the i. Okay? And that is equal to 5. But still, it is important to realize that the numerator is still in a standard form, but the real part is this one, the imaginary part is this, and the denominator is a standard form. This is the real part, and that's the imaginary part. Okay, so what we can do, we can use this property of absolute values. So if I have two complex numbers, z and w, divided, and I know that w is not equal to 0, the absolute value of this fraction is equal to the absolute value of the numerator divided by the absolute value of the denominator. And what absolute value is, if I have a z equals to x plus i y, then the absolute value of z is equal to square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So in other words, absolute value of a complex number to power 2 is just simply the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Okay, so to get rid of that square root sign, to do the algebra simpler, so I will raise both sides of this to power 2, but before that I will use this uh, relation. So what I do, I can say that the absolute value of this fraction is the absolute value of the numerator plus the absolute uh, over the absolute value of the denominator. And that is equal to 5. Okay? Now I raise both sides to power 2. The motivation behind that is because I want to avoid having a square root size. If I raise this one to power 2, the numerator will be raised to power 2, the denominator will be raised to power 2, and this number becomes simply 25. Yes? And now I want to use this absolute value of this complex number is e to the power of 2 is equal to the real part to the power of 2 plus the imaginary part to the power of 2 divided by the same for this one, a minus 1 squared plus b squared is equal to 25. Okay, so I multiply everything by the denominator to get rid of this fraction. So what will happen is I will have a minus 25 squared plus b squared is equal to 25 times a minus 1 squared plus b squared. And what I want to do is just to expand these and simplify this algebraic expression on both sides as much as possible. So I expand this using the squaring rule. So let me write it here. 
So this becomes the first one squared, 2 times the first one times the second one, 58. And the second one is squared, 25 to power 2, 625. And then I will have 25. I expand the new uh, expression within that pair of brackets, so it becomes the first one squared, 2 times the first one times the second one plus the second one squared. And then I will have it be squared at the end. Okay, so let me write the left side once more. Oh, sorry, I forgot to write this b squared there, yes? And then I multiply 25 in. So 25a squared minus 50a plus 25 plus 25b squared. So when I wrote this, I forgot to write this b squared here. So these three, these three terms was the expansion of that one. Okay, so what can I simplify here? Yes, I can see that minus 50a and minus 50a here are gone. And then what I will do, I move all these, so these two terms to the right and keep 625 to the left. So I have 25a squared minus a squared becomes 24a squared. Yes, and then I have 25b squared there minus b squared is 24 b squared and I move this 25 to the other side so it becomes minus 25 but this number can be simply written as 600 and between these two I can factor 24 out and then I will have a squared plus b squared uh, so I divide everything by 24, 600 divided by 24 is just simply 25, and this becomes a squared plus b squared, yes? But if you see what is a squared, b squared plus b squared, because z is a plus bi, a squared is the real part squared plus b squared is the imaginary part squared. So I would write it as absolute value of z to power 2, yes? because z is a plus bi, absolute value of z is the square root of this number, so this number itself is absolute value squared. And then I take square roots, this becomes 5, and then it becomes absolute value of z. And remember, I don't need to put plus and minus, because I know absolute value of a complex number is a non-negative number, so there is it is not possible for absolute value to be minus 5, so the only 5 is acceptable. So it tells you that the absolute value of z is exactly equal to 5. Okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.